Hey everyone, so welcome back to the channel. We got some more news this time from videocards.com and they're comparing the Titan V to the 1080 Ti and Vega 64. These are just some benchmarks in some synthetic tests, so nothing really too crazy, uh, but it is a little bit interesting how inconsistent these results are. I'm not quite too sure if this is down to, you know, the person who's benchmarking, because it is an amateur benchmarker, or if it's actually got something to do with the Volta architecture, not scaling as well as it should be in certain applications, but we'll work that out as time goes on. We'll get more benchmarks, I'm sure of it, but yeah, we got these first set of amateur benchmarks. So it says, first gaming capable NVIDIA card based on Volta architecture tops the leaderboards of almost all benchmarks. The benchmark results posted on Reddit are demonstrating the performance of overclocked Titan V in various configurations. Yeah, th the English isn't so good in this article, but we'll just continue. NVIDIA Titan V is the first, wow, I can't even select, first consumer product with one th uh, with 5,120 CUDA cores enabled. It is also the first gaming capable graphics card from NVIDIA with HBM2 memory on board. And it seems that it would be possible to overclock the Titan V memory out of the box with the benchmark results published today appearing to have a 110 to 130 megahertz higher clock than the standard Titan V frequency uh, for the memory. And that increases the maximum theoretical bandwidth to 752 gigabytes per second. Not particularly interesting, but you know, as you can see, EVGA Precision already supports Volta overclocking up to 170 MHz for the core frequency, at least on this sample. This resulted in actual frequencies beyond 2 GHz, so that's important. It means that Volta it has very similar clock speeds to Pascal, and that's primarily because it's almost the same process. The 12 nanometer process is pretty much 16 nanometers, just a little bit smaller. Um, so yeah, not, nothing too huge on that. And it says here, um, I made a quick comparison between my overclocked GTX 1080 Ti, 1080 and RX Vegas 64 graphics cards with stable and sustainable clocks. Bear in mind, our platform features a 6800K, while the author of the Titan V benchmarks is using a 6700K. He does say, however, it should have minimal impact on graphics scores in the 3D Mark software, which is true. Uh, graphics scores won't be majorly affected by your CPU uh, in these synthetic tests. So as you can see, this is just normal Firestrike 1080p performance. It's about 4K higher than the GTX 1080 Ti. Um, and it's almost double, almost double of RX Vega 64. Then we move to Firestrike Extreme. There's only about, I believe that's a thousand. Yeah, it's a thousand score difference, which isn't big enough really at all. And uh, in Firestrike Ultra, it actually loses to the 1080 Ti. So this could be down to anything. It could be down to memory bandwidth. It could be the fact that maybe Firestrike doesn't work so well with HBM. Um, but if that were true, I mean, RX Vega wouldn't be doing so well in that either because it also uses HBM too. So I'm thinking this is more down to a driver thing that's got to do with Volta. And in Time Spy, it just absolutely destroys Vega. It's, it's almost double its score. Again, and uh, it's about 2,000 points higher than the 1080 Ti. And Superposition, it's about 1,000 points higher. And then Superposition 1080p Extreme is where we see a massive 40% difference. This one is only about a 10% difference. Um, and this one is about 40%. So it's really clear to me that in certain applications, it's scaling a whole lot better. And it seems to me, at least, that as the resolution gets higher, the, the actual scaling doesn't work out as well. So I'm not sure if this is down to a driver thing, but it is quite interesting to see that that is the case. Uh, and we also have Gears of War 4 and Ashes Singularity, but I mean, you can't exactly, um, you know, compare those because we don't know what settings he used and any of that th stuff. So essentially, it's an interesting card so far, but I, I'm really waiting for professional benchmarkers to get their hands on it because I think that'll give us more consistent results and show us the actual problems that perhaps the Volta architecture might have on a driver side right now. But yeah, very interesting. Uh, and I'll keep you guys posted if there's any other stuff. Like, comment, and subscribe as always, and I'll catch you in the next video.